Hey Redeemer family, Dean Dan back with you again with another episode of Farm to Table. This, this month on Farm to Table is my friend and our new staff member, Hawken Sawyer. Yay! Okay, so are we ready? You ready to walk? Sure. Okay. Let's do it. Anna, you ready to walk backwards? Ready. Okay, good. All right, Hawkins, so you have just moved here how long ago? Um, about three months, a little more than three months three now. Three months. Yeah. So, uh, and you moved from? We moved from Chattanooga and before that, Southwest Florida. Okay. And you moved here to do what? What do you do at Redeemer? Yeah, my role here is uh, farm production manager. I work with Stephen, uh, making sure we have enough produce for our CSA and trying to help plan out what we're going to plant and when and just figuring out what systems are we going to establish here on the farm. Um, Great. Yeah. Farm production manager. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of fun. And flowers. Obviously, you have to talk about and, the flowers. And the flowers. Yeah. yeah I love flowers. Very good. Okay, so as has been become a tradition for us here on Farm to Table, I don't know if it'll last much longer than this, but uh, uh, tell me your, uh, what's the origin of your first name? Hawken is an interesting first name. Apparently, my mom has told me it's after a rifle. Um, yeah. Not a big gun guy myself. I right. could be, but my dad was into guns. It was his turn to name the child. And um, I think these guys made a rifle, and it's called the Hawken rifle. Their last name was Hawken. Interesting. It's an ancient gun. An yeah. ancient gun. Yeah. Okay. All right, so, so then you, you're not like, you could have been Remington. Or right. You could have been the Henry Repeater. Maybe I lucked right? out. I yeah. think so. I, I've gotten compliments on it my whole life. So I tell people I had nothing to do with it. Well, uh, tell me about, tell me about, you were married. Right. Yep. And who are you married to? Her name's Emily. She's wonderful. Okay. Um, we got married about two and a half years ago, actually in East Africa in Kenya. During the pandemic, that's a whole story we'd love to share. Right. And what were you doing in, uh, in East Africa? We were actually in West Africa working. Oh, West Africa, um, well, we, were, we got married in East Africa, okay. but we were in West Africa working at a farm, a community project. I was working with goats and sheep, and she was working with, Emily was working at a nursery uh, for trees, not kids. And um, <laughs> we hopped over to Kenya where Emily grew up, where her family was, to get married. Great. That's yeah. Wonderful. Well, now your transition here from Tennessee as well, although joyful in that we get to welcome you and, and a new chapter in life, it's also marked with some sadness too. And so this is something that has, has really shaped the two of you. And, we, and as you enter in even more deeply into the Redeemer family, you want other people to know about as well. We tell, me about, uh, tell me about your son. Tell me about Oaken and what happened. Yeah, so um, my wife gave birth on March 2nd, just a couple months ago. And um, our son's name is Oaken. He, um, that's from Isaiah 61. Um, he lost too much oxygen during the labor, and um, he was with us for about a day. So, um, yeah, we, he was full term. He was healthy. Emily was healthy. So it was a shock and a surprise, um, and definitely the deepest, darkest valley we've ever walked um, together or individually. Mm -hmm. And... Um... And not only did you lose your new son, surprisingly as well, um, but then also much of uh, your guy's family is in Tennessee, and so you, you had to That's right. a lot of that support system to come down here yeah, as well. How, yeah. uh, how, um, how, how have you guys been adjusting here at Redeemer and with this transition? Um, it's been a challenge, yeah. yeah. I, um, I've been so blessed by the community here, by the staff members at Redeemer. They've been awesome. Um, the people here have been really welcoming and friendly. Um, I've been so blessed by the job. Um, I love being in the dirt, working on the farm. Um, but Emily and I, yeah, we want to be known. We want people to know this is a huge part of our story. It just happened so um, we're not quite ourselves, uh, and if you've seen us crying at church every Sunday, well, there you go. now you know why. Right. Yeah. So, well, that, that's a good point. How, how do you, because people are just getting to know you guys here, only a few months now, um, and that's a pretty deep subject to say, tell me about the son that you lost on your way here. Yeah. How, how do we help people know how to talk to you guys about this in a way that is, that is beneficial to you and is a blessing to you and not awkward for other folks as right. well? Right. Uh, can you give some guidance about how people can best serve you and chat with you about it? Yeah, so I've learned so much about grief and grieving and suffering 
going through this valley myself, um, I think one of the best ways to, for me, what, 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 what makes me feel blessed is when someone comes and they say, tell me about your son, tell me about Oaken. Mm. Um, if someone pretends like nothing happened, that's actually really hard. Mm. I think that's, for me, more difficult than someone saying, you know, pretty insensitive things. Mm. Um, there's obviously a spectrum of what people prefer, what people don't. For me, I like to be asked about Oaken. Um, ask me what my favorite thing about him was, what I remember about him. I like to hear people say his name. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just for to know that people are remembering him with us, mm -hmm. people are grieving with us. Mm -hmm. um, that's really, really helpful. And when I walk alongside someone in the future mm -hmm. who's grieving, um, that's what I'll try to do is try to remember with them and grieve with them mm -hmm. the person that they've lost, mm -hmm. um, whether suddenly or not suddenly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's like Paul talks about that um, in, in the idea of comfort and that when you are comforted, you can then comfort others with the comfort That's that right. you've received yeah. as well. And so, well, um, well, we are, uh, we were praying for you before you guys, um, before you guys came down when we knew you were headed this way. Yeah. We, we prayed for you from a distance even before we knew you, most of us knew you personally uh, and through the loss of Oaken as well. And we are, we are so thankful that you're here. And we do pray that this is a place of family and relationship and healing for you mm. uh, and a place of fruitful ministry as well. That's not a farm joke. Um, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> and that we, we, we are so thankful that you're in your role and that you're, you and Emily are here and, uh, in and, uh, and we pray that the Lord's going to do mighty things through you. So thank you for bringing your family here to be with us. Yeah. And, uh, and this, this is Hawkin. And so um, you'll see Hawkin and Emily here on Sundays. You'll see them if you volunteer on the farm. Another, uh, another place where clearly God answered prayers for us as we were praying for who to take this position. And, and, and clearly God brought the right person and the right family here as well. And so um, Hawkin is a, is a sign of God's provision for us as well. Well, and I've enjoyed getting to know him over the course of the last few months. I uh, hope you guys will as well. And as we share in both the joy of this new work here and in the continued grief of, mm -hmm. of Oaken and, and also in the, the confidence that, uh, that Christ is sovereign even, even over That's death right. and yeah. that uh, and the Savior that we celebrate and that uh, is, had victory even, even over Oaken's death as That's well. Right, and yeah. so, uh, so we're thankful together. This is the real work of the gospel. This is re what real family is about. So welcome uh, again, even three months in. Welcome again. Thank and, you. Uh, uh, and Hawken Sawyer.